This study evaluates the ethical decision-making of ASL interpreters. American Sign Language Interpreting was not recognized as a formal profession until 1964 and has been evolving rapidly since then. Part of the development of this field is that of the interpreting models, or the way an interpreter views her role and responsibilities. The models are at the heart of this study, a central focus in understanding interpreters' ethical decision-making. There is little literature that exists surrounding interpreting, but in particular surrounding the interpreting models, so the literature review evaluates scholarship from multiple professions to draw important conclusions about ethics. These conclusions include the importance of addressing the power dynamics between a professional and their client, the subjectivity of ethical standards established by a field or industry's governing body, and the insufficiency of many training pro programs in addressing these aforementioned challenges. The following study involves individual semi-structured interviews with nine interpreters. The only prerequisite for participation was that the participant was currently an ASL interpreter. All participants were women, seven white and two black, with years of experience ranging from less than a year to almost 30. The transcripts of each interview are being coded using Atlas TI, a qualitative analysis software, using an inductive approach to analysis. Data analysis is still in its early stages and has not yet been completed. Therefore, only a small portion of the data set is reflected in the following results. All interpreters in the study thus far view their role as a communication facilitator, which is a model that encouraged interpreters to advocate for their needs as professionals as well as their consumers' needs. The behaviors and responsibilities beyond doing the actual physical act of interpreting, however, depended on the interpreter. For example, newer interpreters often see their role as an ally. The use of the ally model typically signals a more hands-on approach while those who strictly identify with the communication facilitator model have much clearer or stricter boundaries. No matter what model these interpreters most identified with, all acknowledged a power imbalance that existed between themselves and the deaf consumer. However, some found this power imbalance to be relatively inconsequential and easy to address. While interpreters acknowledged their education gave them a solid foundation for their understanding of things like ethics and power imbalances, they also attributed their ethical standards to individual factors such as religion. Overall, results suggest that while ethics are subjective for a multitude of reasons, an interpreter's decision-making and how she sets and or crosses boundaries may relate to the interpreting model she most closely connects or relates to.